Hey everybody, how's it going? So last year I spent a good amount of time covering this ballot initiative that took place in Massachusetts for the automotive right to repair. The TLDR of this is that there was an automotive right to repair bill that was passed in 2012. However, it had a loophole for wireless diagnostics. And while you could plug your little tool into the car and get information out of it, if everything starts to move over to wireless, the 2012 law would no longer apply and automakers could lock out independent mechanics from being able to do repairs. This passed by a fairly large margin. Now, I wanted to go over just some of the fear-mongering that was used here before I get into this piece of news. It's important context for those who weren't aware of it. So if you take a look at this campaign, you'll see that AutoCare, AutoZone, O'Reilly, you know, companies that help you fix cars donated a lot in favor of this. And the companies that were against it were GM, Toyota, Ford, Honda, and Nissan, aka the auto manufacturers. They gave millions of dollars to this committee Coalition for Safe and Secure Data, Coalition for Safe and Secure Data that published garbage like what you see here. If question one passes in Massachusetts, anyone could access the most personal data stored in your vehicle. Domestic violence advocates say a sexual predator could use the data to stalk their victims. Pinpoint exactly where you are, whether you are alone, even take control of your vehicle. Vote no on one. Keep your data safe. This is fear-mongering garbage. Further, on the site, safeandsecuredata.org, which no longer exists, it says, cybersecurity. Complex data requires complex security. The space shuttle has 40 million lines of code. Your car is 120 million lines of code. This is an enormous amount of information that must be properly protected. Automakers invest millions of dollars each per year to safely store driving data from hackers. On an annual basis, these automakers stop countless attempts by foreign actors and criminals to access this information. Conversely, there are no requirements for data protection or safe storage standards for repair shops included in the ballot question. In fact, many businesses who would gain access to your data under this proposal lack the cybersecurity infrastructure to be able to guarantee the safety of this sensitive information. You know who else lacks the cybersecurity infrastructure to be able to guarantee the safety of this sensitive information? Ford, who gave over $4 million to create this fear-mongering garbage and this website, safeandsecuredata.org. Let's go over some Ford stuff today in this article. Ford bug exposed customer and employee records from internal systems. A bug on Ford Motor Company's website allowed for accessing sensitive systems and obtaining proprietary data such as customer databases, employee records, internal tickets, etc. This week, researchers have disclosed the vulnerability found in their site. This was discovered by Robert Willis and Breaker with further validation and support provided by members of Sakura Samurai Ethical Hacking Group. They went over, they show screenshots of their internal systems, everything here. They went over what they were able to find from customer and employee records, finance account numbers, database names, and tables and so on and so forth. Now, similar to John Deere and many other companies that will pound the drum on safety and security it is a reason that right to repair is bad while simultaneously not protecting their own internal systems, they ignore the people that are actually trying to point it out. So not only are they donating millions of dollars to create stuff like the Coalition for Safe and Secure Data to make you think that if you go to an independent mechanic that your data is going to be at risk, when people actually point out the issues in their own systems, they ignore them. It took six months to force disclose. In February 2021, the researchers had reported their findings to Pega that fixed the CVE in their chat portal relatively quickly. Now let's go over to Ford. The issue was also reported to Ford around the same time via their HackerOne vulnerability disclosure program. But the researchers told Bleeping Computer that communication from Ford was thin and faded as the responsible disclosure timeline progressed. At one point in time, they completely stopped answering our questions. It took HackerOne mediation to get an initial response on our vulnerability submission from Ford, John Jackson told Bleeping Computer in an email interview. Jackson states that as the disclosure timeline progressed further, the researchers heard back from HackerOne only after tweeting about the flaw, but without giving any sense details. When the vulnerability was marked as resolved, Ford ignored our disclosure request. Subsequently, HackerOne Mediation ignored our request for help disclosing, which can be seen in the PDF. We had to wait the full six months to force disclose per HackerOne's policy out of fear of the law and negative repercussions. These are the people telling you that this should not pass because, God forbid, an independent mechanic be able to fix your car, your data may be at risk. When John Deere makes this assertion, they get hacked. Not the independents, John Deere. 
when Apple makes this assertion about security, privacy, security, privacy, you don't want those independent repair people to get access to your data. Their own contracted repair services wind up phishing through a customer's phone, finding their sex tape, and uploading it. And when Ford donates over $4 million to Coalition for Safe and Secure Data, to publish garbage like this, to try and convince you that if you have an independent mechanic fix your car, that you will be raped in a parking lot, they wind up having their systems hacked. Not an independent repair shop, not an independent mechanic, Ford. I hope that people start waking up to this concept that when large corporations try to convince you that you should give up your freedom in exchange for safety and security, that you're not getting either. They're not providing you with safety and security, and they're not providing you with freedom. It's time for people to stop accepting the premise of assholes. When a company says, you need to give up your freedom because we care about your security, tell me how much you care about your security. How much do you care? How much effort do you put in when there is a security issue to actually get back to the people that are concerned, that are contacting you, not asking for financial compensation, just because they don't want to see people get screwed? How much do you really care? about safety and security. Not much. At the end of the day, it's about making it more difficult for you to be able to work on your own products. Because if you're not able to work on your car as easily, you may take it to a dealer and have the dealer make money fixing it. Or you may just buy the newest model. It's almost like Ford financially benefits from that. The sad thing about this all is that in New York City, you'll see a lot of Toyota, Honda, uh, you know, Mercedes, BMW, lots of German cars here. When you go further down south when I travel, you'll see a lot of Ford F-150, Chevy Silverados, because they're, they, they believe that in some way that it's patriotic to buy American, that these companies represent America and freedom and our values. And at the end of the day, it really is sad that these companies don't. Who donated to this? General Motors. That means your Chevy, your GMC trucks. Ford, your F-150, F-250, and all those vehicles, they are donating money to fear-mongering campaigns so that you believe that you will be less safe and secure if independent mechanics are able to work on your vehicle. I don't like repeatedly pointing this out, but it's the truth. And more people need to understand who is lobbying against their freedom and their rights in order for change to actually occur. Because a lot of people that I meet genuinely believe that when they buy a Chevy, when they buy a GMC, when they buy a Ford, they're buying from a company that respects their freedom, when at the end of the day, they don't. And they think that you are so stupid that you are actually going to believe that there is a chance of you being sexually assaulted in a parking lot, like in this video, if you have independence work on your car. It's manipulative, it's disgusting, and I hope people start to see it for the BS that it is. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.